Welcome to yes. another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I am your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome a very, very accomplished and successful fintech entrepreneur from Bangalore, India, Mr. Manish Mariada. Manish, welcome to the show. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Ashutosh. Much humble for the kind introduction i guess you, you just sort of uh, oversold me over there but uh, yeah super excited to thank be you. here and speak with you as well thank you manish is the founder and ceo of fellow he's earlier worked with several early stage fintech startups like uh, coinex and flowbiz so manish before we start talking about fellow tell me a little bit about your own amazing journey in the world of fintech Absolutely. I guess it, it it started way back in the year 2014 when I was interning with this company called Zipper. I was directly working with the co-founders and uh, that's the first time I got introduced to the startup ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And once I started digging deep into it, and especially the CEO was uh, entirely into the VC. I mean, like he was the next uh, uh, VC himself and he used to do a lot of, lot of angel investing. Mm -hmm. Now, that's the first time I got introduced to the world of finance. I was a mechanical engineer mm -hmm. by undergraduation. Mm -hmm. So investment banking was an ecosystem which attracted me big time. I wanted to be an IB myself. And uh, I had a dream university in US and I wanted to sort of go and post my master's. So right. started working at HSBC just for the transition mm -hmm. uh, so that I can sell myself for a master's in finance in US mm -hmm. and uh, completed my master's in science over MSN finance over there. Mm -hmm. Now, that is when the entire fintech ecosystem in US was booming and I got a Grander level of exposure to it, especially blockchain and cryptos back then. Mm -hmm. And in 2017, I came back to India and I was fortunate enough to be the first team member of this company called Coinix, which was back with the largest crypto mm -hmm. exchange. Now, that is how the seed of fintech came in at a very, very deep rooted level to me and right. it grew into whatever it's happening right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. So, for the last six years, I've been just breathing fintech. I've been just being I did not work in any other field apart from fintech. Oh, so, a, so a young internship story in 2014 turned out to be an entrepreneurial experience in 2022, mm -hmm. right now speaking with you. So that's how it happened. Fabulous. And let's now move to Fellow. Yes. Tell me about the venture and uh, what are you doing here? Absolutely. So Fellow is India's first game-based savings and investment application for the Gen Z and young millennial of India to save, play, and earn returns more than a traditional savings bank account. Mm. What exactly we're trying to do as a business is we're trying to merge the world of gaming mm. and finance to make banking fun and exciting for this zillennial segment. How the application works is very simple. For every 500 rupees you save, you get one Tambola ticket and gaming tokens using mm. which you could play games. And if you win these games, you get to win rewards up to one crore rupees. Mm. Even if you lose, your money grows by 10%, just twice the national average. So with gaming, we are bringing them into the world of healthy finance. And this concept is called pricing savings. A big concept in the US, UK, uh, UAE and African markets, bringing it to the Indian market for the very first time. Mm. And what you, what I'm hearing you say is that if, if they make an investment of 500 rupees, yes, where does that investment go? Absolutely. So we have different asset classes listed on a platform, starting with digital gold. Then we have 10% peer-to-peer -peer fund. Eventually, we are coming with mutual funds. We make sure to cater, uh, we, make, we make sure to list only those asset classes, which are safe, secure, and return giving for these consumers, even at a very, very hardcore situation. And people have the opportunity to choose where, whatever asset they want to go ahead and invest in. Right. So we leave the liberty to them. Hmm. And then you also spoke about gaming. Yes, but gaming is a whole new ball game. So are you yes. developing your own set of games or are you tying up with gaming companies? Uh, the current, the new version of the application, which we have currently launched, uh, the app itself behaves like it's an entire gaming world, which we built. That is something which we're building in-house. But there are other casual games you can play on the application. Now, these games, uh, the team has a skill set to build it couple of the games we built it ourselves but right now we're also partnering with gaming companies based out of spain and uh, germany mm -hmm. where, you're, where we're getting at a very very cheaper price we're able to ship games at a faster pace so it's a mix and match of both the things what we do right now amazing you know i've never come across anybody who has combined two very very hot sectors of fintech and gaming yes fantastic I'm I mean, one thing is like when we got this idea also, Ashutosh, uh, when we did consumer interviews for a good three months and uh, 
this was this was uh, the problem was finance uh, penetration is very low in india and the solution what we got was gaming hmm. we are we are excited and intimidated excited because uh, we saw no one doing it in india yeah. and intimidated because no one is doing it in india again like why no one is doing Correct. now that is when we went to the western market studied it mm-hmm. and we found people did it scaled it killed it and that's when we got a good confidence that that's something which we could do mm. and you know uh, i have been doing a little bit of reading and speaking to many many people on gaming and the metaverse and all the stuff that is happening in that area yes yes for fellow what would you say is your customer profile absolutely so uh, i'll root down to the basic consumer interviews when we did also with it absolutely generic consumer interview started with a very young uh, teenager from 12 mm. till an absolute uh, you know seasoned a uh, financial person who is uh, in in his 60s and 70s as well who is having big wealth mm. and the biggest problem what we found was within this 18 to 25 year old segment who is getting into the world of finance and banking for the very first time mm. so our tg is those 18 to 25 year old individuals who are saving and investing for the very first time and uh, yeah that is what we are uh, catering towards right now and even on the platform uh, 80% of our user base strictly fall under this uh, category and uh, the remaining set of people are coming from other set of uh, age groups but yeah uh, this is the age uh, segment if you see the average demographic of a consumer saving and investing on the platform right now the age has been 24.5 who is making an average salary of 50000 rupees per month so this is the spot like spot on demographic which we have been able to hit and this is a area th- these are the people who are consuming gaming and finance at a very higher level currently in india amazing and do you see the demand um similar uh, mm-hmm. or growing in both urban and rural india absolutely uh, if you see the peak pandemic uh, season mm-hmm. the only two uh, i mean uh, one of the two uh, ecosystems which did not take any hit because of pandemic one of them was finance and second one was gaming gaming just grew exponentially big time in the pandemic ecosystem and the penetration of gaming went to so extent that all the biggest fantasy gaming applications in india the biggest uh, penetration is in the tier 2 and tier 3 cities they get the biggest revenue come from coming from tier 2 and tier 3 cities but over there are gambling activities happening because of which they're losing out on the capital now when we told that hey do the same thing we are going to save your money and on and over we're giving you a gaming experience mm-hmm. now that turned out to be a win win situation for them and that is how we are able to attract these people as well so yes it's been just growing finance on the other hand banking penetration happened big time upi has been the biggest biggest example for it and digitization is just growing for the last two years especially post pandemic and especially post demonetization mm-hmm. so yes that's why we sort of chose uh, to build a product which is a sweet intersection between both these worlds oh, wonderful fantastic and good luck uh, thanks a lot for now, that let me now move to a few generic questions for our viewers and listeners on fintech absolutely so for a lot of my viewers and listeners uh, who are uh-huh. spread all over not just india but all over the world mm-hmm. what is fintech and why is it such a hot sector today uh let me go back to 1999 when, when amazon came up yeah. uh technology that is the only word which everyone knew yeah buying a book online was called technology back then what amazon did was it enabled buying something online and that is how e-commerce and tech whatever it's called right now came up it made life easy in enabling something or getting access to something now that is what's happening with fintech finance itself banking itself is such a huge umbrella that uh, several pillars of it are very very difficult to be tagged in a very physical world right now mm. but technology enables it to make this financial ecosystem much more much more easier mm. and that is what is defined as fintech so in a nutshell a technology enabled financial ecosystem which is make life easy which is making life easy mm. which is making these pillars of finance more more accessible to a consumer and mm. that is called fintech in my definition mm. and you know this place is getting is is booming and yet there are many 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 entrants in this yes what are your thoughts for new entrants uh this is what uh, i believe as well uh, when we came up with the idea of fellow we started with a savings uh, in in a savings ecosystem mm. 
absolutely crowded and this is one of the biggest question what we get asked also mm-hmm. like you know uh, it is such an overcrowded segment how like what gave you the motivation to go ahead and do it now i'll speak strictly from an indian perspective of yeah. course uh, sure. happy to sort of touch base on the global ecosystem as well in india itself you see uh, less than 3% of indians have demat accounts mm-hmm. the percentage of indians if there are 100 indians there are only 20 to 30 people who are doing digital mode of transactions only 5 to 10 people are having access to healthy credit mm. the remaining 90 70 60 in each and every segment don't have access to it even they have data points mm. now the pie is so big that one big player alone cannot challenge ta- tackle all these problem statements together mm. now that is why there's such a huge scope for even new entrants to come and disrupt this ecosystem but at the same time the value proposition what you're offering needs to be super unique super concrete that you would be able to survive these competition now right. one thing we need to be super uh, honest and candid to us as entrepreneurs is the big giants out there have big fundings and if they find it they just go ahead and do it mm-hmm. now you should have the skill set to find the right problem statement in this big pie go for it scale it super fast and disrupt it and be the first one to do it mm-hmm. now that is when you would be in, in all leading position to go and compete in this high octane competitive market which every company is doing and if you see right. every company is a fintech company let it be e-commerce let it be agritech everyone is trying to be a fintech company mm-hmm. so you need to make sure that your value prop is super super concrete and you know what you're building in this uh, amazing ecosystem which is super big right. which is worth disrupt- disrupting and now uh, you know a, a much broader question yes. as someone who's in the world of fintech <laughs> and someone who's in the world of gaming Mm-hmm. what are some of the global trends you are beginning to see uh, and i mean i you know, i'm sure you uh, do talk about the metaverse if you have to yes uh, absolutely so uh, let me talk about the global trends in two ways i'll speak about finance first and let me talk about uh, gaming first uh, gaming gaming uh, after that mm-hmm. now let me take the sweet example of brazil brazil is something which very much uh, resonates with the consumer behavior of india as well mm-hmm. uh when a neo banking application was launched uh, in uh, brazil mm-hmm. everyone thought that will this even make business like one of the biggest problem with neo banks is how will they make money mm-hmm. the largest neo bank right now in brazil is turning out to be profitable one of those very few fintech companies and very few neo banks which turned out to be profitable in a country like brazil where spending power is super super low Mm. now that is where you are saying that consumers are ready to pay for a fintech application consumers are ready to pay for a software if there's a value proposition associated with it mm. you've seen the last 10 years itself the neo banking ecosystem has grown exponentially and especially in india it is expected to be a 58 billion dollar market by 2025 and the reason why this is happening is because there's so many problem statements which are lying out there so many people who who deserve these financial uh, products but it's not reaching out to them mm. but with with mobile being immediately available to a user mm. everything is able to be delivered to them mm. so that is why the ecosystem has been growing phenomenally great and let me talk about the metaverse also mm. now metaverse is two things what i yeah. mean metaverse as a concept itself i feel uh, since i started my life with the crypto ecosystem and a blockchain mm. background the product has been for the 1% of the 1% Correct. audience right yeah. now mm. but the way it can sort of grow the way it can sort of flourish is it's, it's absolutely phenomenal mm. but at the same time decentralization is something which is super new to the audience they have been listening it since 2010 since the concept of bitcoin since the concept of mm. blockchain came in mm. but decentralization giving it into the hands of a consumer who is exploiting the current regulated ecosystem also mm. will be a biggest biggest uh, you know uh, challenge for it mm. now metaverse combined with healthy regulation that is where i see huge scope of going things ahead mm. and another thing which unfortunately which is happening is uh, a lot of false promotion has been happening because of this mm. the positives of metaverse haven't been brought or mm. the positives of blockchain crypto have been especially decentralized finance yeah. which has huge scope in india has been brought in a really really good line that mm. but one thing what i concretely feel and when we were there since our time at coins we have been fighting for is healthy regulations mm. once they come in i'm pretty sure that these two ecosystems are going to flourish mm. now talking about gaming gaming and metaverse just yeah. go together mm. you're seeing giants like netflix chain like facebook chain like apple the fans of the world completely focusing on gaming 
Correct. If you see in entertainment ecosystem, more than consumption of these content, consuming content of gaming is going exponentially high. Mm. And even even the sequoias, even you take the biggest funds, they're having gaming specific funds happening. Correct. Now that itself speaks that how big gaming has become, and that is why these are the two biggest hot hot bed segments right now, not just in India but in the even go global ecosystem. Mm. Thank you. That's a great response. And Manish, uh, the other aspect of uh, the entire fintech world is the huge amount of data. Yes. Now, there is also, when, when you come to the metaverse and uh, yes. fintech and uh, yes. gaming, Yes. The, the challenge that I was reading about could be one of privacy uh, and protection of a lot of the personal data that may Absolutely. be out in the metaverse. Absolutely. How do you reconcile fellow, uh, which is in both the segments? Uh, absolutely. Now, data, I guess, uh, it's, it's just being spoken everywhere. And every like every second day, uh, some or the other healthy regulation is coming into, especially in data protection. Like if you take 10 years ago, uh, if if I were an individual, uh, if, I, if my data of health had to be recorded, only hospital was recording. Okay. If my data of E-commerce had to be only, only my supermarket was recording. Yeah. Now all those things right now is available in your mobile. Mm. Your, with these applications, it's not just if I'm using a financial application only, the data is not just restricted to that. With the other random permissions which are kicking in, right. which other but their applications for whatever purpose, purpose they're asking, mm. it has become it, it it has become to an extent of getting exploited big time. Mm. Now that is where uh, you know companies need to come into ethical boundaries of using this data at a very, very uh, restricted level and mm. using it in a healthy level as well. Right. Now, the first thing what we see to happen on fellow, especially with gaming and finance, finance being so sensitive data and gaming is high level fund data. That's mm. it. Setting that fine balance is super, super important. We make it super vocal to these consumers saying that, hey, this is why we are taking your data and this is the only purpose. Mm -hmm. And if someone is asking any other random reason as to why exactly you're taking my PAN card for a gaming application, why I'm taking my Aadhaar for a gaming application, mm -hmm. that is when we say that, hey, for gaming purposes, we don't use it. But since you're saving, these are the government regulations which we apply to. Mm -hmm. So take what is needed. Don't put a consumer into a fix of uh, being receptive towards giving the data. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, uh, have the consent of the consumer before uh, doing anything, especially with data, that is what I would say. In fact, we are recently having a roundtable conference. One of the ministers were asking how exactly startups could be benefited out yeah. of uh, you know the data privacy laws being so stringent. Mm. Uh, we happen to give some very healthy points over there, and uh, we are super glad that government is taking some healthy uh, actions, especially mm. in terms of bringing startup uh, inclined uh, data privacy tools as well, because we are exploring at the end of the day. Yeah. Fabulous. Now, let me move to a few questions for you on startups. You know, you've been yes. part of two early stage startups. You've got your own uh, startup fellow, which seems to have take, really taken off well. Yes. Um, let me start by asking you, as a startup entrepreneur, what would you say are some of the important qualities a startup entrepreneur should have? Uh, see. More than qualities, uh, first of the thing, uh, what uh, I would feel is uh, have empathy. Mm. Uh, empathy toward to three people, three biggest stakeholders, your mm. consumer. Yeah. Secondly, towards your uh, team members. Mm. And thirdly, towards your investor. These mm. are the three biggest stakeholders who you are answerable to mm. and make sure that you are building for them. So that's point one. Mm. The second quality, what you need to have is, uh, which no one speaks of it, mm. which is... Uh, making sure that you will be able to push yourself mm. because you push the entire team, you direct them. But at the same time, there's no one to sort of give you that vision and they give you the direction. Mm. You always need to be perseverant to never lose out on the time mission. And you, you have a lot of stories where founders just lose out on the motivation in spite of having that zeal, the team, right. everything. Right. So that is the second biggest. You need to be strong. Uh, you need to be perseverant. And third, you need to be strong. You absolutely need to be strong and... Uh, Prompt. Mm. The reason why I say prompt is, uh, especially being from a fintech ecosystem, I happen to speak. This is uh, regulations are coming very now and then, and business are getting shut down just because of regulations. Mm. So you need to be prompt enough to act to them. So empathy covers your users and the entire stakeholders you're responsible to. 
being uh, you know a strong and perseverant that's your personal thing and thirdly being uh, super reactive to whatever situations are coming up these three in a nutshell will sort of take yes. you other things you will absolutely figure out yourself absolutely. but yeah these are well three said. values what i believe well said and i agree as an entrepreneur i agree with all the three points you just given it thank you so much yes the next question you anish is that uh, it is often said and there's you know data well but only one out of 10 startups make it yes my question to you is based on all your experience and you must yes. be, must be an investor in other <laughs> startups as well uh uh-huh. why do startups fail uh see in my in my belief uh, textbook answer two three uh, it's there but in my belief uh, i guess around three, four reasons why i feel uh startups absolutely fail mm-hmm. uh the first one you know it's very uh, out in the air also it's because of count i'll, I'll come with a degree of uh, you know increasing order as well yeah, first thing yeah, what yeah. i see is the uh, founder conflicts yeah this is very very common uh the founders need to be on the same page at the end of the day founders need to fight at the end of the day but at the same time uh, because you know only if you fight you get to know uh, how exactly your two mind process are going at the Correct. end of the day you build, build a healthy business Correct. but conflict shouldn't be to that extent where the breakups are happening and the company is parting way but this is one of the biggest reasons why especially early stage startups break up that is the first reason mm-hmm. second biggest reason is not having a product market fit uh people uh, just go ahead and build a product and uh, it doesn't have a product market fit like the consumers don't need the product at the end mm-hmm. of the day mm-hmm. and the third thing is if you're trying to Uh, build a company which is absolutely inclined towards raising more funds mm-hmm. not having funds and not a inability to raise funds is a third reason why we are seeing startups fail at a very very uh, bigger level but the fourth reason which i personally believe and i see a lot of founders with whom i advise right now mm-hmm. doing is they think that they're building a company but they're not building a company they're just building an idea mm-hmm. there's no hard and fast rule that a uh, idea can build be a scalable revenue generating business mm. a business can always be a scalable revenue generating thing but an idea cannot be the same so this yeah. is the biggest mistake what i am seeing that people think that i have an idea and they can come and build a company mm. but they don't know how to bring in revenue how they can bring, bring in profitability mm. though they attract pmf they still not they still just can't do it so mm. these are the four reasons why i think startups uh, are failing in recent times fabulous thank you I have time for two more questions. Uh, my Absolutely. next question is on funding. Yes. There's often a debate where it's some people say that you should bootstrap as long as possible. Yes. And the other one is raise money whenever you get it. What are your thoughts? <laughs> See, uh it it'd be super hypocritical if I say that you know uh go and boot up because i myself in the funding ecosystem but uh, see my my dad built a business uh, absolutely bootstrap with a very small chunk of money and we saw our, uh, you know parents grandparents there's, there's no there's no vc ecosystem back then mm-hmm. everything they started right with their savings or you know lending what Correct. they took so businesses can be built scalable businesses can be built even without raising money i am a huge huge admirer of what zero that did right now and i'll always be a pro of building a bootstrap business mm-hmm. but at the same time there are some unique ideas which need capital which bring in revenue in the long run uh, and uh, they don't bring in revenue right now mm. so in such sort of ecosystems money is very very crucial and this is a blind rule what i follow take money when it is there absolutely uh, there is nothing called less money you will always there's always room for uh, effectively use, uh, use it, utilizing the extra surplus cash as well raise how much ever you can but don't uh, oversell your equity to that extent that uh, you know you, you're just uh getting more money and value your equity as much as possible that is why i'm a big time believer of building a bootstrap business mm-hmm. but at the same time uh raise when it is possible at the same time don't give out a lot of equity while you're raising as well wonderful and my last question to you and this yes. for the many many people who will listen to our conversation based on your amazing journey so far mm-hmm. what would you say are three lessons you would want our viewers and listeners to take away uh one thing which uh, more than see I, i'm not a you know <laughs> a v- very eligible person i know no, your own learning lessons absolutely learning. but a uh, couple of learnings which i which i strongly believe in is uh, firstly uh, just go and do it mm-hmm. don't be afraid mm-hmm. uh, even before starting up every or even before doing something big everyone will self doubt themselves correct 
you don't know the answer to it until unless you have gone and done it mm. do it there's always something the opportunities are so immense right now mm. that even if you're giving a shot at it even if this feeling something or other good will happen out of mm. it so just go ahead and do it if you want to do it wonderful mm. secondly when you're doing this this is something which i realized in recent time and very less people speak about it focus a lot on your mental health mm. you're doing so amazing things in your personal professional lives yeah. that you don't uh, for, care a lot on your health mm. make sure that you focus on your personal health and mental health especially while you're building this mm. and thirdly even when you're building and you're doing all these things don't forget to give it back to the society mm. the reason why this why i say this is uh, when i started up i just wanted to do a lot of things but i just did not get the right people to sort of reach out to mm. uh, especially while building etc mm. when you know that you're in a capacity to help out people make sure that you're helping out people and you know it pays out in some way or other fashion mm. i'll tell you mm. how also like a small help sort of helped me out in getting a few, you know significant chunk of funding which i did very bad then mm. which i was helping a company in a very subtle way of a small advice mm. so whatever help you do it will sort of pay back in some way or other fashion and these are three things what i learned but more yeah. and over this one one thing which i would really want to sort of tell to everyone is mm. especially the 21 to 30s who are there be absolutely selfish in this uh, period guys it is because this you you own this uh, you own this age it's absolutely mm. what you do right now it sort of defines for again age is just a number but this is the this is the age of exploration this is the age of doing everything and be absolutely selfish to yourself and just go ahead and build it because the opportunities are immense and sky is the limit for whatever you could do and this is the best advice what i could give to the people who are listening out there fantastic and on that note and your amazing learnings you know let me start with the last one which is to all the young people be selfish because you own this age go and do yes do what you think you have to do yes next one you said is just do it the next then you said focus on personal and mental health when yes, you are absolutely in the middle it off middle middle of it all and finally give it back to society Big thank time. you manish for speaking to me thank you for talking to me about your own journey about like amazing approach. things that you're doing in fellow thank you for talking to me about fintech about uh the, the metaverse about gaming uh and finally thank you for speaking to me and good luck to you thanks a lot ashush for hanging me on this call and again uh, uh, totally uh, you know huge admirer of the work what you are doing in recent time bringing out the stories of people making it reach to a lot of people out there and uh, giving them something or other so that they can take some learnings out of it so really really appreciate for the great stuff and really looking forward for more such amazing podcasts from you thank you so much Thank you for listening to the brand called You Video Cast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience, and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.